hello students in this video i am going to give you some tricks to remember uh, the ovule of gymnosperms and angiosperms in case of plant kingdom and uh, uh, i want to give you the differences between endosperm of gymnosperms and angiosperms so before discussing about the gym endosperm of gymnosperms and angiosperms i want to give you some details of the ovule of gymnosperms and the ovule of angiosperms so this is the ovule of gymnosperms so actually the body of the ovule is nothing but megasporangium integumented megasporangium is nothing but ovule so here this is the body of the ovule the body of the ovule is new cellus the body of megasporangium not ovule megasporangium at first let's talk about megasporangium so body of the uh, megasporangium so this is the body of the megasporangium which i am showing here that is new cellus new cellus is nothing but megasporangium now this new cellus is surrounded by integument here only one integument is there one integument so this uh, uh, megasporangium which is covered by one integument is called as unitegmic ovule so ovule is nothing but integumented megasporangium the megasporangium or the new cellus which is covered by integument is called as ovule right so here this is new cellus which is covered by only one integument so this integument is three layered outer layer middle layer and inner layer outer layer is thick middle layer is sorry outer layer is thin middle layer is thick inner layer is thin it is three layered integument integument is one but it is three layer it has three layers in it right so this integument covers the entire body of the ovule except at the top so forming an opening called micropyle and inside this new cellus now this part is new cellus inside this new cellus you you forget about this green colored part this entire part which is covered by black colored uh, this uh, pen is new cellus so one of the new cellular cells gets differentiated into megaspore mother cell this megaspore mother cell undergoes meiosis to form four megaspores among four megaspores one megaspore is functional and three other megaspores degenerates that functional megaspore undergoes many mitotic divisions resulting in the formation of female gametophyte so here female gametophyte is haploid new cellus is diploid integument is also diploid that means all the layers of integument are also diploid so now female gametophyte is haploid where from haploid is starts from megaspore so megaspore mother cell is again diploid megaspore which is formed after meiosis of megaspore is uh, megaspore mother cell megaspore which is formed after meiosis of megaspore is haploid so megaspore is haploid as female gametophyte is developed from haploid megaspore this uh, multicellular female gametophyte is also haploid now inside this female gametophyte two are more than two archegonia are formed this entire entire green colored part is female gametophyte inside this female gametophyte i have drawn here with green color sketch so these are archegonia this is one archegonium this is another archegonium so each archegonium consists of two parts that is neck this part is neck and basal bulged part is venter and inside this venter it consists of egg and it also consists of venter canal cell just above the egg just above the egg it also consists of venter canal cell right so two or more than two archegonia are present so this is about the structure of ovule in ovule of gymnosperms there is no funicle as in case of angiosperms so here funicle is absent funicle is absent in case of the ovule of gymnosperms so ovule of gymnosperms is unitegmic ovule because it is covered by only one integument and it is um, orthotropous ovule because it is straight ovule orthotropous ovule which is without funicle right next after fertilization ovule develops into after fertilization ovule develops into seed seed outer layer of the integument develops into wings of the seed middle layer of the integument develops into test of the seed testa is nothing but outer layer of seed coat which is thick 
inner layer of the integument develops into tegmen which is the inner layer of the seed coat which is thin so integument all three layers we studied next coming to uh, this one female gametophyte so female gametophyte is there na? before fertilization between egg and male gamete itself female gametophyte develops into endosperm which is haploid tissue and hence it is called as pre-fertilization tissue it is involved in giving nourishment to the zygote which develops into embryo after fertilization zygote is formed after fertilization between egg and male gamete zygote is formed and this zygote is deployed embryo is also deployed right and this uh, zygote gets nourishment from female gametophyte so for giving nourishment to the zygote this female gametophyte develops into endosperm so endosperm gives nourishment to the zygote which develops into embryo so here new cellus remaining part of the new cellus this part which is present outside the green colored one and inside the black colored one uh, black colored circle is new cellus so remaining new cellus develops into what is the ploidy of new cellus now diploid develops into perisperm so new cellus develops into perisperm hence now seed consists of what it consists of endosperm it consists of perisperm it consists of perisperm it consists of wings and it is naked seed because it is not covered by ovary and hence it is not covered by ovule is not covered by ovary and hence um, seed is not covered by fruit wall so seed is said to be endospermic seed perispermic seed winged seed and naked seed right so here inside the seed the tissues which are present are haploid and even diploid endosperm is haploid perisperm is diploid wings are diploid and uh, seed coat that is uh, which is with two layers testa and tegmen both are diploid right so this is about the development of endosperm in case of gymnosperms now coming to angiosperms Angiosperms. In angiosperms also, first I'll explain about the structure of this ovule. Then we'll study about what happens to the parts of the ovule after fertilization. Okay. So this is complete ovule which is covered by ovary. So this is new cellus. This part green colored part is new cellus. You forget about this embryo sac first. This part is new cellus. Uh, which is nothing but megasporangium which is covered by two integuments inner integument and outer integument and these integuments these coverings are covering the uh, new cellus or megasporangium entirely except at the top which is forming a pore called a pathway called micropyle right okay next so inside this new cellus one of the one of the new cellular cells gets differentiated into megaspore mother cell which undergoes meiosis so megaspore mother cell mmc undergoes meiosis and forms four megaspores four megaspores among four megaspores one mega only one megaspore is functional three megaspores gets degenerated so one megaspore is functional and this functional megaspore undergoes mitotic divisions seven mitotic divisions or three generations of mitosis resulting in the formation of embryo sac this embryo this is called embryo sac so ploidy of micro ploidy of integuments is 2n ploidy of new cellus or megasporangium is also 2n because these are the parts of sporophytic plant body ploidy of chelaja we know what is this chelaja hilum and funicle all these uh, the ploidies of all these parts is hap, uh, sorry diploid whereas the ploidy of embryo sac is haploid so this is embryo sac so the ploidy of this embryo sac I am writing it as AES embryo sac is haploid as it is developed from haploid megaspore then inside this embryo sac all the cells are haploid what are those cells this is egg which is present at the center and these are two synergids which are present at sides of the egg egg is haploid synergids are also haploid synergids and egg together is called as egg apparatus and these three cells are vegetative cells which are ephemeral in nature which degenerate at first these are also haploid and these two polar nuclei are also haploid and these two polar nuclei fuse together to form diploid secondary nucleus just before fertilization of egg with the um, 
with the male gamete so pollen grain uh, lands over the surface of stigma as i have given in the previous video lands over the surface of stigma let's say this is uh, carpal carpal having stigma style ovary here pollen grain lands over here and then it germinates over the stigma and this uh, pollen tube carries male gametes towards the uh, towards uh, ovule so this is style it uh, travels uh, pollen tube travels through style uh, the stigma style and then enters into ovary let's say this is ovule it enters into ovule and it enters into embryo sac and discharges the male gamete that male gamete one male gamete fuses with egg cell and the other male gamete fuses with diploid secondary nucleus so the male gamete fusion between male gamete and uh, male gamete and female gamete is syngamy in the previous uh, video i explained about it and fusion between other male gamete and uh, uh, diploid secondary nucleus is called as uh, triple fusion right so as a result of syngamy zygote is formed as a result of trip uh, triple fusion uh, primary endosperm nucleus is formed which is triploid zygote is diploid right okay now coming to let coming to the parts of the uh, seed or the fruit which are formed after fertilization so after fertilization ovary develops into fruit ovary which is covering all the so this is ovary which covers all the ovules is developing into fruit and it is diploid ovule develops into seed seed is also diploid ovule is covered by two integuments na? outer integument develops into test of the seed coat which is thick which is diploid inner integument of the ovule develops into tegmen that is inner layer of the seed coat which is thin which is again diploid so after fusion between male and female gametes that is male gamete and egg what is formed here zygote is formed this zygote is again diploid which develops into diploid embryo the polar nuclei which are present at the center center uh, that is central cell of the embryo sac fuse together just before fertilization resulting in the formation of secondary nucleus so that it results in the formation of uh, so when secondary nucleus uh, fuses with male gamete it results in the formation of primary endosperm nucleus which is triploid and this fusion is called as triple fusion this fusion is called as triple fusion i am writing it as tf triple fusion and now this primary endosperm nucleus develops into endosperm which is triploid so this endosperm is formed after fertilization and hence it is post fertilization tissue so inside the seed what is present now seed seed consists of seed coat which consists of two wall layers testa and tegmen which are diploid and inside that it consists of embryo embryo is also diploid embryo which is developed from zygote hence it is diploid and seed may have uh, endosperm or it may not have endosperm if endosperm is present endosperm is triploid endosperm which is formed after fertilization so endosperm is formed before fertilization in case of gymnosperms and it represents female gametophyte and it is haploid in case of gymnosperms in case of angiosperms endosperm is developed after fertilization hence it is post fertilization which is triploid right and uh, in case of angiosperms female gametophyte is represented by i am writing it as fg female gametophyte is represented by embryo sac i am writing it as es whereas in case of gymnosperms female gametophyte is represented by is represented by endosperm right which is pre fertilization tissue so this is all about the ovule of gymnosperms and angiosperms hope you understood this concept by using by uh, by looking it to the, into this concept you can solve different questions related to gymnosperms and angiosperms especially in this area of ovules after fertilization before fertilization endosperm and all thank you students